This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. There. Seven eighths hot now. Just about. Here he comes, Dave Silva's favorite wrestler, Tito Santana, one of the nicest guys ever. And I think you could argue this is one of his better matches, especially from this era. And certainly in front of the biggest audience. Ariba. And here we see Sean Mooney backstage with Bobby Heenan and Mr. Perfect. Let's track it. Your title bout. Mr. Heenan, would you like to speculate on this upcoming title defense for Mr. Perfect? Oh, I'm going to be feeling the effects of the Mr. Perfect match, but it will be from the champagne from the victory party. You see, Santana, you're a former Intercontinental Champion, and that's the way you're going to stay. You know, I hear people make reference to Tito Santana to have the same likeness as a cheetah. There's only one perfect animal in the world. And you're looking at him from the perfect mane to the perfect 2020 vision to the perfect teeth with no cavities. Tito Santana, what you're looking at is what champions are made of. Intercontinental champion, Mr. Perfect. And it's Saturday night, Santana, and I'm at my best with Bobby the Brain Heenan in my corner. I see nobody, nowhere stopping this force at this time. Let's go back to the ring for yet another championship match. My God, did... Kurt looked great here. Kurt always looked great. And when you talk about one of Tito's best matches, well, hell, if he didn't have a good match with Kurt Hennig, something would be wrong. I liked uh, Kurt in this outfit. By the way, we're not too far removed from WrestleMania 6 where his undefeated streak would end to Brutus the fucking Barber Beefcake. And we know Brutus earlier this month nearly died. So everything's upside down and now Kurt is the intercontinental champion and we need an opponent for him. And we know it's going to be the debuting Kerry Von Erich here a little later. I guess we should mention to everybody how he won this intercontinental title. Um, back on April 15th on wrestling challenge, the figurehead president, Jack Tony would announce that the ultimate warrior had relinquished the intercontinental championship. And a tournament would be held to crown a new champion. And it began on, it began on the April 28th superstars. Santana beat Akeem by count out on the May 5th episode. Perfect beat Jimmy Snuka. The next week, Dino and Brutus would wrestle to a double count out. And they're both eliminated on the 13th of May on wrestling challenge. Piper and Martel would also wrestle to a double DQ and are both eliminated. So that means now Santana and perfect. We're going to get a bye to the finals and they'll wrestle each other. And that happens on May 19th. Mr. Perfect becomes the intercontinental champion beating Tito Santana. And now here we get the big rematch. This actually gets a little bit of time, 12 minutes here on the big show. You know, you know why you're, you're digging Mr. Perfect so much right now. Why? Look at the tan, the tan and the neon. Yeah. Well, because that tan is over the blonde hair, the tan it's you've been hanging out with Eric lately. I can tell Need something. Uh, Lenny Bakken has another question. If Kurt Henning was alive today, do you think he'd be involved in the wrestling industry in some capacity? I gotta think so. What say you Bruce? I think that Kurt could have been involved pretty much in any way that he wanted to. Kurt had a great mind for the business and loved the business in general. So I think that passing on his knowledge to the younger talent that, yeah, he definitely would have been. Or he could have been uh, hunting with Wade Boggs somewhere and just uh, chilling out. So I heard a great story the, the other the other day about Wade Boggs and Jeff Foxworthy and uh, the big boss man and that They'd been on a hunting trip, and Jeff Foxworthy had, that's why I think of this, because Perfect and all those guys always used to go hunting. I believe Perfect was probably there, too. But Jeff Foxworthy shot a big buck and spent all day looking for the buck, because obviously after he shot it, the buck ran away, and he couldn't find it. And so after spending all day looking for the buck, he couldn't find it or anything like that. Uh, they all came back to the cabin and what have you. Wade Boggs got a big uh, buck that was like in the lodge there and had been stuffed. 
and placed it in Jeff Foxworthy's bed. So when Foxworthy went to bed that night, he had a big buck in there, and they said, they said, uh, hey, hey, Wade, uh, this is what a deer looks like, in case you needed to know since he couldn't find it. It's funny, ha ha. Bradshaw told me the story was much funnier when he told it, but it was a ha ha because he came out and he says, you know, I wish I was bigger and I had somebody that was tough enough that could actually fight Wade Boggs and the big boss man, but he didn't. So he just had to laugh about it. Boy, look at that. Mr. Perfect in that tan. You're really struggling today. You know why blind people don't skydive? No. Scares the shit out of their dogs. Well, folks, the show is off the rails and it's all downhill from here. What? I haven't gone to, to Papa Tomato, Mama Tomato, Baby Tomato, walk down the street. Turns back and says. Pop, well, Baby Tomato falls by. Uh, Papa Tomato, Mama Tomato squashes Baby Tomato and whatever it says ketchup. Yeah. That's the worst butchering of a Pulp Fiction joke I've ever heard. Thank you. Damn, Earl Hebner and your hurt ankle. That ankle is hurt. I can tell by the look on his face. But Mr. Perfect is giving up. He's saying right now, I give, I give. Please, I give. Oh, my God, no more. I give up. Can't fans. you hear him, Earl? Look at the fans. Everybody's on their feet. Well, yeah, because he's giving up. They know it. They hear it. Why can't Baby Earl... The pain in Baby Earl's ankle has gone to his ears. Oh, that's, I mean, hate to hear that. Yeah. Flying well, burrito. Is the, but th this is the best part of, of everything coming up, by God. His ankle's still hurting, but he sees that pinfall. Now, watch this. Here he comes. And this is the worst. Oh, my God. No, nope, not today. Look at the crowd, dude. Yeah, that damn referee. Hit his other ankle, Tito. Bullshit. I think they're in cahoots. You ever been to cahoots? I have. It's in uh, Fayetteville, uh, Tennessee. It's a restaurant inside of an old jail. Oh, okay. Yeah, his ankle hurts so bad that it's affecting his counting. And he goes right back to holding it because it hurts. And yet the goddamn trainer nor fellow referee has come out yet. Charles Robinson, if he was with y'all, he'd be sprinting down the aisle. Would he? He is a little oh, yeah. sprinter. If George Michael were in the ring, he would. Are you Those all the way on the loop there. on that obsession now? What's that? Are you all the way in the loop on that obsession now? Ooh. Charles Robinson uh, loves him some George Michael and Wham. He loves so George Michael so. more than anything except his daughter. I don't know that, that his daughter ranks up there that yeah, high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wins. I know that. Okay. All right. Well, now you got old referee Fetty Smart in there. Where the hell was he during all that time that Baby Earl had a hurt ankle? That's what I'm saying. He could have won. He could have. But shit. He didn't. But Lenny Baca doesn't have another damn question? Stumped you though, didn't I? Yeah, I got you one. Don't get hot. Sorry. Let's talk about uh, your man here, Buddy Rose. We're going to see him take on Kerry Von Eric in a few moments. And Tony wants to know who came up with the blow away diet gimmick for Buddy Rose? Buddy Rose pitched that idea at a Denny's um, somewhere in the Midwest but I will never, ever forget it as long as I live. 
buddy was in a different booth, and we were, Pat, Vince, and myself were sitting there eating late night meal when Buddy came over and everyone had had, had a few adult beverages and says, hey, Vince, I've got an idea. What about, because, you know, because I am a nice svelte, 217 pounds, but for all those other fat fuckers out there, he goes, we have a diet and it's a, it's a big box of powder, like you get like a big detergent box of powder. And you dump all this powder and shit all over you. Because then we turn on a big fan, and, and the name of the stuff is Blow Away. Because all you got to do is you put this stuff on your body, and then you turn a fan on, and it blows, blows, blows the fat away. Because then I do it, and like one of those old infomercial commercials, and you see a before picture of me where I'm like sad and I'm fat, and then you see a, an after picture of me, and I'm still fat, but I got a big smile on my face because I use the blowaway diet because it does absolutely nothing. But you know, people will buy shit. And the way Buddy was doing it, we were in tears laughing uh, with his whole pitch to do this damn blowaway diet. And then we started talking about it. I was like, we have to do this. And by God, we did. And you just blow, blow, blow the fat away. Want another piece of cake? Go ahead. All you have to do is pour the powder on and blow it away. Could you imagine if that was a real product? And how much blow away we really could have sold? Oh, we would have been shielding it on this podcast so hard. Oh, you have no idea. You think Had him have- eating salad. If you don't want to eat salad, you're not a rabbit. Have a sandwich, big six foot sandwich and shit. Charlie Thrower wants to know what happened to the event center and why don't we see it more? Could it work in today's environment of not having a GM? I think a, you know, the event center really in today's day and age is just turned into whatever set of whatever show that you're watching at the time. See, there's a nice clean finish, winner and still champion, Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect. What do you think? Is that your favorite intercontinental title of all time? Or is there another one you prefer design wise? You mean other than the original, original? See what I did there? You like the original, original the best? It was different. But of the contemporary Intercontinental Championships, this one, I think, was most iconic. No, I agree. I mean, this is the one I grew up on. It is curious, though, that you know you guys have the first world title, the, the Buddy Rogers belt. But- hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.